suppose we have an application for Bob's Ice Cream Palace. And in this application, we have a listing of all the flavors that are current that Bob is serving. And I can add a new flavor and I can remove a flavor because those flavors may change from day to day. But at the end of the day, when I close this application, that information is all lost. So the way around that is to store that information in a data file. And we're just gonna use a simple text file that we can create with a text editor. And that would list the flavors we have in that data file. And when I start up my application at the beginning of the day, I can read data from the data file into my application. And to do that, we created an object called a stream reader. You can sort of think of this as opening a channel between our application and the data file. And then I can stream the data from the data file to my application and handle it. In order to do that, I have to use a framework called system.io, input output. That's what IO stands for. So I need a directive of using system.io at the top of my code. And then I can clear whatever's in the flavors list because I'm gonna replace that with whatever's in the data file. I'm gonna open up a stream reader object. That's this channel. I'm gonna name mine SR. You can name it anything you want as long as you maintain the naming conventions for objects. I'm gonna set SR equal to file.opentext and tell it which file I wanna pull from. So in this case, it's my file is called flavors.txt and I usually put that file in the same folder as my executable so I don't need to provide a path but you can provide a path here but this is a literal string to the file name and or the file name and path. So it's going to open up this channel and between flavors.txt and my application. Then I'm going to read one line at a time and I'm going to use a while loop to do that and my loop is while not sr.endofstream. End of stream means it's read to the very end of the file, and that's either true or false. So if it hasn't read, it's false, and so I'm gonna take the not false, which would be true, so while I haven't hit the end of the file, I'm gonna take one line at a time and read sr.readline, and place it in xyz, and then add xyz to my flavors. And that read line is gonna read one line at a time, second time through the loop, it reads the second line, third time the third line, and so forth, and I'm adding each of those to my loop. At the end, I want to close that stream reader. I'm gonna close that channel. Now, at the end of the day, I maybe have added some new flavors, removed flavors, and I wanna retain my listing of flavors for the next day when I reopen the shop. I'm gonna use a stream writer object. And so when I click the Save Flavors button, Again, it's going to use that system.io framework, create the stream writer object, which I named SW. And so my SW equals file.create text. I'm going to create this file in my directory and name it flavors.txt. And by creating using create text, if that file exists, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to overwrite it with whatever the current list of flavors is. And when I'm writing that data to this data file, I'm going to use a for loop to do that. And I'm going to go from int is zero, remember our, our list box indices start at zero, and go to lstflavors.items.count, however many items there are there, and it's going to be less than, so remember we start counting with zero for our indices, but the count starts with one, so that'll work out perfectly. I'm going to increment each time through the loop, so I'm reading one, the next line one at a time. And each time through that loop, I'm going to write line, yes, this should be an SW. I'm going to take my stream writer, SW, and write line lstflavors.items sub i, whatever the value of i is, convert that to a string, and then write that out to my flavors.txt file. When I'm done writing all of those flavors out to my text file, I want to close my stream writer. And that's sw.close. Let's take a look at this running. Here's my project running in Visual Studio. I have a list box named LST Flavors, a button of BTN Get Flavors, BTN Add, BTN Remove, and BTN Save. Let me just run my program so you can see it in operation. I'm going to hide my or redock my properties over to the right bottom. And let me run. So my list box is empty until I say get flavors, and then it reads in from a text file the different flavors, and I can add a new flavor. So add flavor of cherry delight. 
and we'll add another new flavor. Hershey's chocolate. So those are added in. I had the sorted property set to true on my list box that automatically sorts them alphabetically. I'm going to cancel. Let's get rid of one. We're going to get rid of the very cherry. So I'm going to remove the selected one. So now I have a different order than we had coming in. So I'm going to click Save Flavors, and I'm going to close my program. Let's run it again. Get Flavors, and there is my Cherry Delight and my Hershey's Chocolate added in, and that very cherry is gone. So we can see that both reading and writing is working. Let's take a look at our code. So the Get Flavors, we have Stream Reader SR, creating a Stream Reader instance. So by the way, up here we have our using system I.O. So that has to be there to use the Stream Reader and the Stream Writer. So we're creating a Stream Reader called SR. I have a string called Flavor. SR equals file.opentext. And in my folder is a text file called flavors.txt. I'm going to clear the list box of any flavor that's already there. And then my while loop. And rather than using uh, not sr.endofstream, we can also do an sr.peak. That's a method that looks to see if there's still data to be read. And if there's no longer data to be read, that will be a minus 1. So we're going to do this while sr.peak does not equal a minus 1. Now again, I could have simply said not sr dot end of stream. Both of those will work. So let's go back the way I had it. So in my while loop, I have flavor dot sr dot read line, reading one line at a time, and then I'm going to add that item flavor to the items collection of my list box. Once I've read all those lines in, I'm going to close my file. To add a new flavor in, we have a string called new flavor. We're going to do a loop in which we're just going to be able to add multiple flavors. So new flavor, we're using the input box, getting the flavor. Um, and if that new flavor does not equal a null string, so it didn't leave the, the flavor input box empty, we will add that flavor into LST flavors. And we'll do that as long as new flavor is not empty. If I click cancel or I close that input box, then that will also end it because new flavor would be empty at that point. To remove a flavor, we're going to make sure they have something selected. So if LST flavors selected index does not equal a minus one, meaning there's an item selected, we're going to remove that item from the list box. Otherwise, we're going to tell them you must first select a flavor to delete and that nothing was selected. And then finally, to save our flavors out to our text file, here we're going to use a stream writer object, integer of i. We're going to open up file.createText and our flavors.txt text file. If that file does not exist, it'll create it. If it does exist, it will overwrite that file with the new version. There is also a append text, which will append anything we write to the existing file. And so if LST flavors items.count is greater than zero, meaning there's stuff in that list box, then we're going to go through each of those items one line at a time in a for loop. And we're going to write the, the flavor out one line at a time for that text file. When we're all done, we've written all the data out. We're going to close our stream writer object. So that's our code for reading and writing to text files.